In June of 2015, Ellen Hughes, a member of our UCSF faculty and family for 35 years, died at home after a long struggle with cancer. She was one of my closest friends in the Division of General Internal Medicine, and I am truly grieving her loss to us. Ellen and I came from a family of five children. We were born within the span of six years, and both of our parents were physicians. But our mother was a woman who fought her way into medical school, and in fact was one of the very first women ever graduated from University of Pennsylvania. When I thought about Ellen and I was trying to think about what really made her special. And what I realized is that I think in Ellen's kind of bone of bones, it was like in her cells, there was always the sense of wonder and awe. And that oftentimes translated just to sheer joy. She absolutely was able to find both in her patients and in her students, in their stories and who they were as people, and in that kind of same level of connection, that same awe would just show up. Her deepest, greatest, greatest love of all really was teaching. And the students, teaching her patients too, but for her to teach students was as great a joy as anything she knew. The definition, I think, of authenticity is that when your values line up with your words and your words line up with your behavior, and Ellen never deviated from that. I think the thing that allowed all of this to come together, it's like the medium in a Petri dish maybe, is her humor. Because she could find, she was so happy to laugh at herself first, but there was, in her laughter, there was always a lot of joy about how life just happened. Ellen was a UCSF medical student in the class of 1984 initiated into AOA. But I first met Ellen when I was director of the UCPC residency, and she was being considered for one of our few slots. As I remember it, the UCPC residency selection committee was unanimous in placing Ellen in the sure-to-match territory. And we were delighted a few months later when the match came through and she had done likewise. I was privileged to precept Ellen in the general medicine practice on Parnassus, where I discovered that she and I shared some common interests, the interface of spirituality and medical care, the daily practice of meditation, and the well-being of our residents. I met Ellen when she was leaving for a sabbatical for a year or two, um, and she was leaving her primary care practice to launch the Osher Center and she interviewed me to take over the care of her patients. All the descriptions I'd heard about Ellen made her sound quite legendary. She was smart, she was empathetic, a master clinician who went above and beyond for her patients. She was the doctor of the most seasoned clinicians on campus. I felt pretty privileged taking care of her patients, and more than a decade later, that's still how I think about them. They're Ellen's patients. And as I met them, each one of them raved about Dr. Hughes. I learned that she had forged relationships in the exam room and outside, and for each of these relationships, there was a special bond. They trusted her, they relied on her, and they truly adored her. I mean, really adored her. They knew that she cared about them. All of these relationships with Ellen were really personal. She shared a connection that was something about herself as well. It was whether it was a shared love of nature or travel or family, they all had a story to tell about Ellen. Following her residency, Ellen did a one-year fellowship with us to prepare for a career in the medical education track, and in 1988 decided to stay with us in the division as an assistant professor of medicine. She was ultimately promoted to full professor in 2000. In 1997, Ellen was appointed interim director of the Osher Center for Integrative Medicine, a position she held for four years. During this period, she served as the principal investigator of the $1.5 million grant from NCAM, establishing the current structure of our Osher Center. Subsequently, Ellen became its first director for education and endowed chair. 
She helped to define and shape this nascent field through her journal articles and textbook chapters. Ellen taught the early medical students in their pre-clerkship, particularly in physical diagnosis. She was borrowing her fellow faculty stethoscope for that. She taught students on their clerkships. She taught residents both as an attending physician on the inpatient service and as a preceptor in clinic. Ellen taught her fellow faculty by lecturing through the Osher Center. And lastly, she taught the public by speaking about integrative medicine, again, through the Osher Center. There were several instances, opportunities that students took to express their appreciation of Ellen throughout her career. They would try to repay her acts of kindness by letting her know how meaningful and important she was in their lives. Ellen was an extraordinary individual with the heart of an educator and loving wisdom in her soul. She was a terrific teacher, winning teaching award after teaching award with grace, humility, and humor. She also played a pivotal role for our students as an advisory college mentor, and her acceptance into that position was a slam dunk. Every day that the students and we could have with Ellen was a gift. The spiritual dimension was central to Ellen's life. One of my earliest memories in our 30-year friendship was when she would walk out her backyard to light an incense stick for each incoming student, saying their name and a prayer for their well-being. She was uh, a spiritual midwife to many. She um, took in the context in which the person lived, you know, the, the spiritual context as well as the psychological, very, really holistic. Um, and she was very curious about you know, the unseen ways in which we interact with the environment and how the environment impacts us. She helped so many people get medical care from, you know, a man who developed frostbite from, you know, camping out in the snow and making sure that he could get into UCSF and be treated to, you know, a, a very important teacher who needed a valve replacement and she was instrumental in finding someone who would operate on him. She and Rick were, Rick Scott, were doing the John Muir Trail. Towards the end of it, there's one 11,000 foot pass, and as they're struggling up it, Ellen looks down and sees this piece of paper with a rock on top of it, and it's this poem. And the person had left his name and phone number. They ended up contacting him. But this became her prayer. And every morning when she'd be out in the woods, before they start hiking, they would recite it. So it goes, it's very short. It says, may you hear the mountain song and may the river wash your soul. May the wildflowers be your guardians and the path lead you into stillness. Dr. Talmadge King, our department chair at the time she died, in his tribute to Ellen, cited her ability for bringing out the best in everyone with whom she interacted. This is exactly right. Ellen focused on the well-being of those around her at every stage of her career at UCSF as a medical student, resident, fellow, 
and faculty member. Therefore, the theme of promoting the well-being of clinicians is an appropriate one for the annual Ellen Hughes Lecture and Award. Each lecture is presented at a grand rounds and videotaped. The video and slides and related materials are archived on our websites. In the evening, the lecturer attends a dinner with faculty responsible for clinician welfare in their roles at UCSF. At the dinner, each lecturer receives an award, an award check and a personal plaque. Also, the lecturer's name is added annually to a larger master plaque kept here. If you would like to contribute or contribute again to the fund sustaining the Hughes lecturers, there is an envelope with your program. Thank you for coming. By your presence here today, you honor Ellen, our dear friend, and help maintain her legacy, continuing to promote our well-being as clinicians at UCSF.